Hi guys, good morning. So today we are going to discuss our next topic that is the cephalo matrix. So starting with the introduction, the cephalo it means the head and metric it means the measurement. So basically the cephalo matrix it is used to describe as an analysis and the measurements which are made on the cephalometric radiograph right so in this the discovery of the x-ray in 1895 by wc ronjan right so the broadband and the hofrit they simultaneously presented a standardized cephalometric technique using a high powered x-ray machine and a head holder which we called as a cephalostat important for your mcq right now uh, types of cephalogram so in this we have two types of ceph we have the lateral ceph and the frontal ceph so the lateral self it provides a lateral view of a skull while the frontal self it provides an anterior posterior view of the skull so talking about the analysis so the lateral self they have many analysis like the tenus analysis downs analysis tweets analysis the width appraisal the mcnamara sassoni and your old ways analysis which is for your soft tissue right so your rickets analysis but for your frontal self you have grumman's analysis g r u double m o n s so the cephalometric analysis which are used in the frontal self is the grumman's analysis important for your mcq Now this is just a brief about this. This is the distance. This is the distance. It is the positioning of the film. It is the distance at which the film it is placed from the. This is the mid sagittal plane. So the distance it should be of fifteen centimeter. Again, important for your MCQ. So the second point. regarding the fish uh, frontal self is it is used to determine the facial asymmetry these are the two important points for your exam point of view so after this next are the uses of the cephalogram so the cephalometric it is mainly helpful or the cephalogram it is mainly helpful in planning the diagnosis and the treatment plan and in case of the skeletal classification and case of dental abnormalities in establishing the facial type in evaluation of the treatment result in predicting the growth related changes and the changes which are related to the surgical treatment for example for the orthognathic surgery for the orthognathic surgery you will have to perform the cox analysis c o g s cox analysis it is mainly used for if you are planning any kind of orthognathic surgery valuable aid in research work involving the dental facial region next is the lateral cephalogram so it is also referred to as lateral ceph it is important in orthodontic growth and analysis for planning any kind of treatment and diagnosis monitoring of the therapy evaluation of the final treatment and outcome this is the lateral view of the cell and this is the frontal view it is used to determine the facial asymmetry or skull asymmetry usually the grumman's analysis is done it provides the information related to the skull width skull uh, uh, symmetry 
and vertical proportion of the skull craniofacial complex and oral structure for assessing the growth abnormalities and trauma but basically it is this frontal step it is used to determine the facial asymmetry so after this coming on to the cephalometric landmarks so the cephalometric landmarks these are the use of certain in this we use certain landmarks or the points on the skull which are used for the quantitative analysis and the measurement right so in this we have two types of the landmarks we have the anatomical landmarks which represent the actual anatomic structure of the skull so these are the point n that is the nasion the point a n is point a prosthion point b pogonion and menton and second are the derived or the constructed landmarks which are that have been obtained secondarily from the anatomic structures so these are the gnathion gonion the pteon that is the pterygo maxillary and the cella so coming on to the lateral cephalogram so in this we have the hard tissue landmarks we have the soft tissue landmarks so in this first we are going to discuss about the hard tissue landmark first is the nasion and it means the nasion it is the most anterior point on the midway of the frontal and the nasal bone on the frontal nasal suture second is the orbital so orbital it is the lower or the lowest most point in the inferior bony margin of the orbit fine third is the porion this is the porion so it is the highest bony point on the upper margin of the external auditory meatus right next is the cella very important cella is the most representing midpoint of the pituitary fossa or the cella turcica fine next is your point a this is your point a it is the deepest point in the midline between the ANS this is the ANS midpoint of the ANS fine and the alveolar crest between the two central incisor it is also called as sub spinae important fine next is the point b this is the point b so it is the deepest point in the midline between the alveolar crest of the mandible and the mental process it is called as supra mental right next is the ba that is the basion it is the median point of the anterior margin of the mag uh, foramen magnum next is the bolton's point again important always asked as an mcq it is the highest point on the posterior condylar notch of the occipital bone important next is the ans that is the anterior nasal spine it is the anterior tip see this is the anterior tip of the sharp p or the sharp bony process of the maxilla fine right? next is the gonion this is the gonion it is a constructed point at the junction of the ramal and the mandibular plane it is the constructed point gonion pogonion this is the pogonion it is the most anterior point of the chin well menton this is the menton it is the most inferior midline point of the mandibular symphysis gnathion this is the gnathion it is the most anterior inferior point on the symphysis of the chin right next is the ar that is the articulate it is the point of the junction of the posterior border of the ramus and inferior border of the basilar part of occipital bone Right. Next is condylon, as the name suggests, most superior most point on the head of condyle. Right. Next, this is PR. This is the prosthion. 
it is the lowest and the most anterior point on the alveolus bone in the midline it is between the upper central incisor next is the id that is the infradental so it is the highest and the most anterior point on the alveolar process between the mandibular ci right next are the key ridge very important it is the lower most point on the contour of the anterior wall of the infratemporal fossa very important right next is the pns c c ans it is the anterior tip of the sharp bony margin and pns it is the intersection of the continuation of the anterior wall of the terigo palatine fossa this is the terigo palatine fossa and the floor of the nose right so next is the broadband very important the broadband registration point so it is a midpoint see the broadband point it is a midpoint of the perpendicular from the center of the cella tarsica this one and the boltons this this point somewhere around here intersection point of the cella tarsica and the boltons point this is what we called as the broadband registration point brp right next is the ptm this is the ptm it is the intersection of the inferior border of the foramen rotundum with the posterior wall of the terigo maxillary fissure and this is g that is the glabella so it is the most prominent point on the forehead right so these are the hard tissue landmarks after this next are the soft tissue landmarks so in this the soft tissue landmark the n dash which is the nasium soft tissue we have already discussed that it is the deepest part in the concavity of the soft tissue and the contour of the root of the nose right this is g it is the glabella which is the most prominent point on the forehead right sn is the subnasal it is the intersection of the lower border of the nose and the outer contour of the upper lip right this is p that is the pronasal it is the most prominent point of the nose next is the ls that is the labial or the labral superioris it is the median point see it is the median point in the upper margin of the upper membrane of the lip next is the sls it means the superior labial sulcus it is the point as the greatest concavity this is ls sls fine next is the stomion s it means stomion superior superior or the superior it is the lowest point on the upper lip stomion inferior it is the highest point of the lower lip fine right? stomion superior is the lowest most point on the upper lip stomion inferior it is the highest most point on the lower lip next is the li that is the labral inferior it is the median point in the lower margin of the membranous lip right and next is the pox soft tissue this is see pog it usually represent in the hard tissue pog dash dash is usually considered for the soft tissue like the n dash the pog dash it is the most prominent point on the chin menton for the hard tissue menton m e dash for the soft tissue right so these are the soft tissue landmarks so coming on to the tracing So the lateral cef it is usually with a dimension of eight is to ten inch. In this, the, this is the acetate mat tracing paper of zero point zero zero three thickness and eight into ten inches. A sharp three D or the three H drawing pencil is mainly used with a fine tip nib, and you can also apply a masking tape. This is the cef of the paper. 
this is you apply the uh, mat or the your acetate mat and you can secure it with the help of the masking tape right a few sheets of the cardboard protector is used view box on which you can place this tracing very important please note it down commonly asked mcq see according to the abo that is according to the american board of orthodontic in 1991 there is a sequential tracing color code for the pre treatment or for the initial for the initial tracing you can use the black color pen and when the treatment is in progress you can trace it with the blue color pen at the end of the treatment when you receive the changes you can draw it or you can trace it with the red color and in the retention when you remove the braces that is the retention phase you can again take the self and draw it or with the green color pen it means black then blue then red then green very important fine so after this coming on to the self planes so in this we have these are derived from at least 2 to 3 landmarks mainly used for the measurement classified into horizontal and vertical planes first is the horizontal plane it is called as true plane if a question comes which of the following plane is called as a true plane so your answer should be the frankfurt horizontal plane fh plane this plane it is usually connects the lower border of the orbit this one and the superior point of the external auditory meatus that is the point porion you can draw a line this is what we call as a fh plane and this is a true plane fine next plane is the sn plane it means the cella and the nasion you can draw a line by touching the cella and the nasion this is the cella nasion point important point is that the cella nasion point it is the most stable plane used for the superimposition and it is also most stable plane when we used for it is for the superimposition for to identify the growth of an uh, child this is very important commonly asked mcq fine right? yes one thing more so this is the sn plane and this is your uh, fh plane so the angle between the sn plane and the fh plane is 7 degree again very important for your mcq it is an orientation angle which is of 7 degree and one thing more for the cephalometric orientation the fh plane or the fh horizontal plane it is most commonly used i am repeating it again for the self orientation the fh plane that is the true plane it is most commonly used again mcq fine so next are the basion nasion plane so this is the basion this point and this is the nasion so this is the basion nasion plane it is a line which connect the basion to nasion next is the palatal plane so this is a line connecting the ans to pns this is the palate see this is the palate a line connecting to pns to ans this is a palatal plane the occlusion plane is this is the occlusion plane this one so this is the occlusion plane and it is a denture plane first of all bisecting the posterior occlusion of the permanent molars and premolars so these are the this is the occlusion plane fine now coming on to the mandibular plane very important three different analysis uses three different mandibular plane for example in tweed analysis the tweed he used the tangent of the this one of the lower border 
for the mandibular plane according to down he used the gonion to menton according to steiner he used the gonion to gnathion fine right? three different person uses three different planes in their cephalometric analysis the tweed he used the tangent t for t downs he used the gonion to menton Steiner's he used the gonion to gnathion. Fine, very important for your MCQ. So after the horizontal plane, next are the vertical plane. In this, we have the facial plane. So it is from the N to POG. This is the facial plane. A to POG. This is point A to POG. This is the A POG line. The facial axis. So the facial axis is. your ptm to this is your ptm to gnathion so this is your facial axis and e plane very important commonly asked e plane is your it is an aesthetic plane or it is a line which is drawn between the most anterior point of the soft tissue nose to the soft tissue of the chin this is this is the e plane commonly asked mcq fine so after this starting with the first analysis that is the downs analysis it is was it was given by w b downs in 1925 one of the most frequently used cephalometric analysis but before discussing the downs analysis i have some important point regarding the jera back ratio guys this is the commonly asked mcq jera back ratio so jera back ratio is your posterior facial height by your anterior facial height into 100 very important and it is the jera back ratio it is always used to diagnose the long face syndrome again very important the jera back ratio it is the posterior facial height anterior facial height the posterior facial height see i'm telling you in this the jera back ratio the posterior facial height is from the cella to your gonion this is your posterior facial height and your anterior facial height is your from your nasion to your menton this is your anterior facial height so the jera back ratio is your posterior facial height that is from s to gonion your anterior facial height that is from your nasion to menton into 100 this is your jera back ratio fine right? is continuing the downs analysis so the downs analysis his finding is on the basis of the 20 caucasian individual of year 12 to 17 which are belonging to both the sex males and female and the downs analysis it consists of 10 parameters five skeletal five dental starting with the first that are the skeletal parameter first is the facial angle so the facial angle is the angle which is formed between the fh plane that is from the porion to orbital and from the nasion to pogonion fine right? so this angle this is called as the facial angle so the average value please remember the average value the average value is 87.8 degree and it ranges from 82 to 95 degree so it gives an indication of anterior posterior positioning of the mandible right if the magnitude increases if this angle increases it leads to the class 3 pattern if it angle if this angle decreases it leads to class two pattern right it means in class 2 it means mandible is retrognathic in class 3 it means mandible is prognathic second parameter is angle of convexity again very important commonly asked mcq so the angle of convexity it is an angle which is formed by the intersection of nasion to point a and point a to pogonion so this is the angle of convexity very important average value is 0 but it ranges from 8.5 to 10 degree fine right? in 
the patient having class 2 you can have a convex profile like this because of retruded mandible or because of either prognathic maxilla right while in normal individual you can find zero degree because of straight profile but the patient having class 3 it means the patient having concave profile due to the prognathic mandible right so the angle of convexity is the profile is convex in class 2 profile is straight in class 1 profile is concave in class 3 patients right so there is a decreased angle it means the negative angle the angle if this angle gets decreased it means it has a prognathic or class 2 profile third one is the ab plane angle so the ab plane angle it is an angle which is formed by a line this is the nasion to pogonion one line and second line is from point a to point b fine so this angle is called as the ab plane angle mean value is minus 4.6 important fine it ranges from minus 9 to 0 indicative of the maxillary mandible relationship in relation to the facial plane positive angle if the angle is positive it means it is class 3 malocclusion and negative angle class 2 malocclusion right next is the mandibular plane angle so it is in this angle it is an angle which is formed between an fh plane and the gonion to menton c the downs analysis in downs he used the mandibular plane which extends from gonion to menton so in this ideally it should be 21.9 degree fine if the angle get increased if this angle get increased so you will get like this if this angle increase so it means your mandibular is posteriorly placed it means these are hyperdivergent hyperdivergent mean these are the mandible is more posteriorly placed and this is more vertical growers and the pattern is hyperdivergent if the angle it gets decreased if the angle get decreased it means these are horizontal growers and hypodivergent very important last is the y-axis so this is the fh plane between and the line drawn between the cella to the gnetheon fine so this angle this is the y-axis so mean is mean value is 59 degree this angle if it get larger see if it get larger like this it means class 2 because of class 2 facial pattern if the angle is get larger it is seen in the class 2 pattern and these are hyperdivergent and if the angles get smaller it is in class 3 patients right so the angle is larger in class 2 then the class 3 patient indicative growth pattern is if the angle gets larger it is hyperdivergent angle greater than normal vertical grower it means hyperdivergent angle smaller than normal it is horizontal grower that is hypodivergent this is hypo this is hyper these are vertical these are horizontal growers now after the skeletal parameter first is the in the dental parameters first is the cant of occlusal plane so the cant of occlusal plane it is basically between the fh plane and the the this occlusal plane so this angle the mean value is 9.3 degree fine and it ranges from 1.5 to 1.4 so it gives a measure of a slope of occlusal plane relative to the fh plane Next are the interincisal angle, very very important for your MCQ. Fine, so the interincisal angle are the angle which are formed between the long axis of the upper incisor and long axis of the lower incisor. Fine, so this angle is called as interincisal angle. So average is 135.4. Angle when it gets decreases, 
in class 1 bimax now what is bimax bimaxillary protrusion mean when there is a proclination of the upper arch as well as proclination of the lower anterior the upper and the lower anterior when proclined that this term is called as bimaxillary protrusion so in case of bimaxillary protrusion the angle gets decreased right and in case of class 2 division 1 also the angle gets decreased while in case of class 2 division 2 the angle gets increased very important i am repeating it again the inter incisal angle it get decreased in bimaxillary bi protrusion cases and in case of class 2 division 1 and this angle it get increased in case of class 2 division 2 fine so next is the incisor occlusal plane as the name suggests long axis of the incisor and occlusal plane fine so this angle average is 14.5 increase in this angle it is suggestive of increased lower incisor proclination increase in this angle it is suggestive of increase in the lower incisor proclination next is the incisor mandibular plane angle as the name suggests incisor and the mandibular so the long axis of the incisor and the mandibular plane angle so this angle mean is or mean angulation is 1.4 increase in this angle it is indicative of lower incisor proclination same as that way if this in, uh, if the incisor occlusal pain angle increases it is suggestive of lower incisor proclination same as that of incisor mandibular pain angle So next is the upper incisor to APOG line. So this is a linear measurement. This is not an angle. This is a linear measurement. So in this, this should be measured by a linear measurement. This is the incisal edge of the upper incisor. Fine. And a line joining from point A to, this is point A to, so this measurement this linear measurement it is called as upper incisor to apoc and the distance it should be around 2 to 7 mm and it ranges from minus 1 to 5 measurement is more in the patient with the upper incisor proclination so this measurement is linear measurement fine so this is all about the downs analysis now after this coming on to the second analysis that is the Steiner's analysis. So the Steiner analysis it was given by Cecil C. Steiner in year 1930 with an idea of providing the maximal information with the least number of the measurement. Therefore he divide its analysis into three parts the skeletal, dental and soft tissue. Soft tissue very very important commonly asked MCQ the S line. Starting with the first, that is the Steiner analysis, the skeletal one, SNA. As the see in this Downs analysis, we always use the FH plane. But in the Steiner, S for Steiner and S for Seller and Nation. In the Steiner analysis, we always use the SN plane. Right? So as the name suggests, SNA. So it is SN1 plane and and to a second so this angle is the SNA angle fine so it is indicative of a relatively anterior positioning of the maxilla as relation to the cranial base see this angle it usually tells about the positioning of the maxilla because we are drawing the line from the nasion to a a suggestive of the maxilla so it is usually represent the positioning of the maxilla in relation to the cranial base fine so if the value is 82 degree very important please note down the average value the average value of the sna angle is 82 degree if it is more than 82 degree it means like this more than 82 it is suggestive of prognatic maxilla 
which is seen in class 2 if it is less than 82 it is suggestive of retrognathic maxilla which is in class 3 right next is as the name suggests s and b the s n and the b now in s and a that was the positioning of the maxilla and s and b it is the it tells about the positioning of the mandible same way if the uh, in this 80 degree is the normal value if the angle gets increased if the angle of the s and b gets increased it means the mandible is more prognathic place and the maxilla mandible is more prognathic place in case of class 3 due to protruded mandible if it is less then it is in class 2 fine the prognathic mandible in class 3 retrusive or retrusive mandible in class 2 see in class 1 the maxilla and the mandible are almost lying in an equal position in class 2 the class 2 is mainly due to the skeletal changes it may be number one either due to prognathic maxilla second either due to retrognathic mandible fine or the combination of above in class 3 it is maybe due to number one prognathic mandible due to retrognathic maxilla or the combination of these two right so next is the angle a and b as the name suggests angle a and b so it is a line which is forming from nasion to point a and nasion to point b so this angle is a and b important is it is two degree right so angle a and b it was given by a riddle important fine so it denotes the relative position of the maxilla and the mandibular with each other if it is more than two if this angle is more than two it is class two skeletal tendency this if it is more than two class two if it is less this angle is less it is suggestive of class 3 important now coming on to the mandibular plane this is the SN plane the cellar to nasion line and I have told you about the mandibular plane in the stener analysis it is from gonion to gnetheon while in the down analysis it was from gonion to menton and in the tweets t40 tangential right so this angle it gives an indication of a growth pattern same way if the angle gets increased vertical grower in class 2 if the angle gets decreases it is in the horizontal grower so the average is 32 degree if it is more than 32 vertical growers that is hyperdivergent less than 32 horizontal growers hypodivergent right so after this next is the occlusal plane so occlusal plane is sn2 occlusal plane so in this mean is 114.5 indicates relation of the occlusal plane to the cranium and the face indicates the growth of the uh, individual fine so after this coming on to the dental analysis upper incisor to na angle this is na and long axis of the upper incisor fine so this angle is 22 normally angle indicative upper inclination of incisor if there is an if the angle gets increased like this like this if the angle gets increased it is seen in the class 2 div 1 why due to the proclination of upper incisors this is the angle now after this coming on to the upper incisor and a linear it is a measurement linear measurement so it helps in the success and a and the in, from the incisal edge to the NA line this linear measurement is your upper incisor to NA 
it helps in assessing the upper incisive inclination normal value is 4 mm it helps in measurement of the proclination of the incisor next is the again the interincisor angle long axis of the upper long axis of the lower this angle is the interincisor angle 132 131 degree celsius uh, degree and it is seen in class 2 div 1 132 131 degree is the normal value if it is less than that it is seen in class 2 division 1 and in case of bimax same as that of more than 132 131 seen in class 2 div 2 next is the lower incisor angle c long axis and to b this angle is the lower incisor angle 25 degree is the ideal value if it is more than 25 there is a proclination of lower incisor less than 25 retroclination of lower incisor so this is the lower incisor linear draw a line from nasion to b and measure the incisal edge of the lower incisor to the to this line this is the linear measurement and normal value is 4 mm please remember the normal values of these analysis now next is the soft tissue analysis very very important also called as tenus line or s line so this is a well balanced phase in a well balanced phase this line it should start with the chin and this is the s shape this is a shape and it should pass at the middle of the s shape this one in a well balanced face fine if the lips these are the lips if the lips these are presented or if the lips these are located beyond this line like this this line is behind and the lips are in front of this line then it is believed to be protrusive and it is marked as a convex facial profile which is seen in class 2 div 1 right if the lips these are behind of this line or behind of this line these may be called as a retrusive lip and it may have a concave profile due to the prominence prominency of the chin it is seen in class 3 patients Fine, very important line S line. So, next is the Tweed's analysis. It was given by Charles Tweed in 1950. He uses only the three planes the Frankfurt horizontal plane, mandibular plane, long axis. He determines the position of basically the tweet analysis, it is used to determine the position of the lower incisor. Very, very important. Starting with this C. In this we have FMPA, which means Frankfurt. We in this we use only the Frankfurt horizontal plane. This is an angle FMPA. This is an angle formed between a FH plane, fine, with a mandibular plane. This angle is your FMPA, and it should be 25. Guys, in tweets and uh, analysis, you have to keep this in mind about the values just you need to remember the values the fmpa this is the fmpa it should be 25 degree impa as the name suggests i am it means the longest is of the lower incisor i am it means and the mandibular plane angle incisor mandibular plane angle this angle it should be around 90 degree right next is the fmia that means the frankfurt horizontal and the ia means the long axis of the lower incisor. in this angle it should be 65 so in this you have 25 you have 90 you have 65 and according to indian norms we usually take the lower incisor at 100 degree important commonly asked mcq according to the indian norm we usually take the lower incisor as in 100 degree so after this next is the width separate uh, appraisal so it is measured 
of an extent to which the maxilla and the mandible these are related to in, in an anterior posterior sagittal plane so it was widths is it was given in widths of water strand fine it is used in the cases where a and b angle is considered not so reliable due to the factor such as the positioning of the nasion and the rotation of the jaws so in this see this is a functional occlusal plane this is the occlusal plane fine and through which the point a it is drawn and point b it is drawn fine so these are the perpendiculars which are drawn onto the occlusal plane so the points of contact to this perpendiculars these are termed as ao and bo fine so in the males very important in the males the bo this one it is a head 1 mm ahead of ao 1 mm ahead in males but in females the ao and bo they are coincide they are at the same level see this is the a this is the b in the females a and b these are coincide at the same plane while in the males the bo it is 1 mm ahead of a fine right? in skeletal class 2 tendency the bo it is usually behind than that of a as we know a is forward b is backward that is why it is seen in class 2 division 1 while in the case 3 the bo it is ahead of a due to the prognathic man, uh, mandible right so after this coming on to the rickets analysis very important also it was given by it also called as rickets analysis it was given by r m rickets it means robert murray rickets in year 1961 the mean measurement given are those of the 9 year old child in this the growth depend variably these are given on the mean change to be expected and adjusted according to the analysis so in this the landmarks this is the 11 factor summary analysis that employs very important commonly asked mcq locate the chin in the space locate the maxilla through the convexity of the face locate the denture in the face and evaluate the profile now after this coming on to the important points this is en it represents the nose dt represents the soft tissue ti this point this is the point of intersection of the occlusal plane and the facial plane occlusal and the facial plane this is the ti point fine this is the gnathion and this is the cephalometric point and this is a6 upper molar b6 lower molar this is the gonion c1 is the condyle dc is the again the condyle dc it is the a point selected at the center of the neck fine and cc is the center of the cranium this is the center of the cranium fine starting with this first of all xi point very very important what is xi point see this is a point it is a geometric point of the which is located at the center of the ramus first of all center of ramus fine and the location of the xi point it is key geometrically to the porion to orbital this is the fh plane the porion to orbital number 1 and a perpendicular is drawn through the pt it means pt is noted down pt it is the intersection of the inferior border of the foramen rotundum with the posterior wall of the pterygo maxillary fissure so from the frankfurt horizontal plane a pt a perpendicular is drawn fine so this one and it divides this complete into the four step the r1 which means the anterior border of ramus 
fine this is r2 it means the posterior border of ramus this is r3 this is the deepest c this is the deepest point of sigmoid notch and r4 this is the inf inferior border of ramus fine so these all by joining these four point these are making a rectangle these are making a, a rectangle so the intersection of the in this the intersection of the diagonals the center point is known as the xi point fine very very important i am repeating it again the frankfurt from the frankfurt horizontal plane you can drop a perpendicular from the perpendicular it is divided into four part the r1 r2 r3 and r4 by making the diagonal by the intersecting of the diagonal of a rectangle the center point it is known as the xi point fine so coming on to the plane same way the frankfurt horizontal plane the facial plane which extend from the nasion to pogonion this one the nasion to pogonion fh plane and the mandibular plane which extends from the gonion to gonetion these are the three planes which are used next is the pterygoid vertical which is a line that is drawn from the pterygo maxillary fissure and perpendicular to the this is the when we drop a line from the fh it is perpendicular to the fh plane the base the basion and nasion plane very important guys the basion and the nasion plane it is always and always used in rickets analysis this is the basion this is the nasion the line joining the basion and nasion this is the basion nasion point and it divides the cre uh, face and the cranium this line it divides the face into one half and cranium into another half coming on to the occlusal plane as we know representing through the first molar a pog line this is also known as a dental plane important we have already discussed this e line very important the e line is the line which extends from the soft tissue of the tip of the nose see from the chin and it directly touch that is the tip of the nose this is the e line there are two lines the s line e line s line is the stenous line which starts from the chin and passing from the center of the s point and e line is your rickets line very important e line is your aesthetic line which was given by rickets and it's this line starting from the chin to the tip of the nose don't get confused again very important mcq so after this coming on to the axis so axis is from the ptm to the gnathion a line is drawn that is known as the axis now axis is divided into two part the condylar axis and corpus axis so first is the condylar axis this is the dc dc is a point which is selected center of the neck of the condyle from the from where the basion nasion plane coincide so d from point dc to point z this is called as the condylar axis important and next is the corpus axis corpus axis is the point or a line extended from the side point to the pm pm is the protuberance menti so there are two axes the condylar axis and the corpus axis condylar axis from the cd to xi point corpus axis from the xi point to protuberance menti fine apart from this please note it down one more important question vto visual treatment objective it was first introduced by the rickets if a question comes uh, which uh, the vto was introduced by first introduced by so your answer should be rickets Now coming on to the interpretation, so this consists of analyzing the chin in the space, the convexity at point A, teeth, and the profile. First is the facial axis. So facial axis, it is an angle which is formed by a basion nasion plane and the facial plane. This angle is called as facial angle. Mean value is ninety plus or minus three. It does not change with the growth. Very important. 
this is the only point which does not change with the growth indicates growth pattern of the mandible and also whether the chin is upward and forward backward or downward next is the facial depth angle so it is an angle which is formed by the intersection of the facial plane this plane and the frankfurt plane so this angle is called as the facial depth angle it this changes with the growth see facial axis it does not change with the growth while the facial angle or uh, facial depth angle it is changes with the growth mean value is 87 plus minus 3 and with an increase of 1 degree every 3 years in every 3 years it will increases by 1 degree that is why it changes with the growth indicates the horizontal position of the chin suggestive whether class 2 and class 3 uh, more forwardly placed chin means class 3 backwardly placed class 2 class 2 hyperdivergent pattern next are the mandibular plane angle these two angle the FH and the mandibular plane angle this angle is the mandibular plane angle and it will decrease it will also change it will decrease in every three year by one degree see in this it will facial depth angle it will increase by one degree in every three year while the mandibular plane angle it will decrease in every three years by one degree so in this high mandibular angle means open bite and hyperdivergent patient vertical grower low angle it means deep bite horizontal grower very important it gives about the indication about the ramus height next is the convexity at point a this is the convexity at point a this is not an angle this is a linear measurement this is the facial plane and this is the point a the, this distance is called as the convexity at point a this gives about the skeletal profile convex profile in class 2 patient concave profile in class 3 patient so this is a linear measurement normally at the year of 9 years it is 2 mm and it becomes 1 mm at the age of 18 years high convexity class 2 already discussed negative convexity concave so next is the teeth so in this the long axis of the lower incisor and the line extending from point a to pop this linear measurement is called as lower incisor to point a and it is referred to as denture plane again important so next is the upper molar to PTV. This is the upper molar and this is the line which was a perpendicular drawn from the FH plane. So this measurement it is called as upper molar to PTV. The measurement it should be equal at the age of the patient. And it determines whether the malocclusion it is due to the position of the upper or the lower molars. So next is the lower incisor inclination. So in this long axis of the lower incisor point A to POC this angle it is the long axis incisor this is the average of this angle it should be 28 degree this is the angle fine next is the profile e phase we have already discussed a line drawn from the chin directly to the tip of the nose this is the e line average measurement is 2 mm at 9 years fine so next analysis is the McNamara analysis very important given by McNamara in year 1984 and it is an effort to create the clinically useful analysis it is usually tell about the maxilla to cranial base maxilla to uh, mandible mandible to cranial base dentition and airway very important airway comes under the McNamara analysis MCQ starting with the first that is the maxilla to the cranial base nasolabial angle is the angle formed between the one line drawn from the base of the nose one line drawn from the upper lip this angle is known as the nasolabial angle it should be 102 degree plus minus 8 degree if it is less than 102 it is acute and it is acute angle is seen in class 2 patient obtuse is seen in uh, class 3 patient or in you know class 2 deaf 2 patient so next is the cant of the upper lip so it is a line which is drawn from the nasium perpendicular to the upper lip so it is 14 degree in males and eight, uh, 14 degree in females and 8 degree in males it is the cant of the upper lip next is the heart tissue evaluation 
so in this interior position of the point a in this this is point a the interior position of the point a it is a positive value the posterior position of point a interior position of point a positive value posterior position of point a negative value in a well balanced board the measurement is they are coinciding measurement is zero while in the 1 mm in the adult 0 mm in the mixed dentition right so next is the maxilla to the mandible this is the linear measurement this is not an angle you can measure it from the scale from the condylon 2.8 point a the uh, maxilla and for the mandible condylon to gnathion you have to measure it from the scale the, this is the anterior posterior on relationship this tells about the length of the maxilla this tells about the length of the mandible next is the vertical relationship so the vertical maxillary axis is when the when there is in downward and backward see this is the mandible when there is backward and downward position of the mandible these are hyperdivergent and vertical grower suggestive of class 2 div 1 while what it is called as vertical maxillary axis fine right? next is the vertical maxillary deficiency in this it is the rotation of the mandible in the upward and forward direction which leads to the hypodivergent patient decrease in the anterior lower anterior facial height in this there is an increase in the lower anterior facial height these are seen in the hypodivergent these are seen in the hypodivergent so these are some now coming on to the lafh so lafh is the measurement from point a n s c from point a n s to menton this is the lower facial height so these are some of the measurement of the lower facial height next is the mandibular plane angle so the average is 22 degree a higher mandibular plane angle increase in the lower facial height decrease mandibular plane angle lower facial height decreases hypodivergent seen in the hypodivergent coming on to the facial angle facial axis angle this is the facial axis angle there is a negative value which is suggestive if it is negative it is suggestive of hyperdivergent excess vertical and if the value is less it is hypodivergent value is positive in hyper value is negative in hypo value is positive now next is the airway analysis this is the upper pharynx this is the lower pharynx in this width is measured from the posterior outline of the soft palate point closest to the pharyngeal wall it should be 15 to 20 mm in the width fine right? less than the width of less than 2 mm or the less it is indicative of any kind of airway impairment important this is the upper airway this is the lower airway this is the lower airway it is the width of the intersection of the posterior border of the tongue and the inferior border of the mandible average is 11 is to 14 now next is the hold way that is the soft tissue analysis it was given by reed holway in 1984 it consists of 11 measurements just give it a brief the facial angle it is 90 degree this is the facial angle it should be 90 degree increase 90 degree increase from that of 90 degree in this mandible is too protrusive it means class 3 if it is less mandible is retrusive that means class 2 so next is the upper lip curvature it should be 2.5 mm so in this a uh, perpendicular is drawn from the fh plane and this line this point is tangent uh, this point is tangent to the upper lip so in this lack of the upper lip curvature this curvature leads to lip strain excess lead, leads to lip reductancy next is the scalar convexity at point a it should be minus 2 to 2 mm Now next are the edge line angles. It should be seven to fifteen degree. It is a angle which is formed between an edge line and of angle between and two bog line. This angle is edge line. It is measured the degree of upper lip prominence. This prominence. Fine. If the skeletal convexity is there, the edge angle does not approximate. So next is the nose tip to edge line. This is the edge line and this is the nose tip. This is maximum should be twelve mm. next is the upper sulcus depth it should be 5 mm 
Next is upper lip thickness. It should be 15 mm. It, it should be measured horizontally from a point from the outer plate of the alveolar plate and it should be 2 mm below the point A. Fine. Next is the upper lip strain. So it should be measured from the vermilion border of the upper lip. Fine. In this, it should be measured 2 mm below the horizontal and in this it should be measured from the vermilion border of the upper lip to the labial surface of the maxillary CI and it should be within 1 mm. Next is the lower lip to edge line. This is the edge line and this is the lower lip. It is measured from the most outer prominent outline of the lip. Negative lip readings are this is negative readings in which when the edge line is behind the lips. Positive readings the lips are ahead of the edge line ranges from minus 1 to plus 2 it is regarded as normal this if the lips are negative reading is if the lips are behind this line if the lips are ahead of this line it is positive reading next is the lower sulcus depth that should be 5 mm last is the soft tissue chin thickness it should be 10 to 12 mm fine So guys, this is all about the cephalometry. Please go through it once. Try to make the notes. Thank you.